Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Fanis Papathanasiou, uh, corresponding with the Greek Public uh, Television, and uh, welcome to the Economic uh, Forum of uh, Delphi. Uh, today, we have the honor and the privilege to host uh, the European uh, Economy Commissioner, Mr. Paolo Gentiloni. Mr. Gentiloni, thank you so much for being with us. It's a real pleasure to have you. And uh, I want to thank you on behalf of the organizers of the Delphi Economic uh, Forum. It's a great pleasure to have you, uh, especially these Good days. Afternoon. That economy, Good afternoon. It's my as you know, it plays an important role. Till a few weeks ago, the most popular people for our panel uh, discussions in our TV shows were health experts and doctors. And now, are economic officials and uh, economists. So uh, let's yes. start. Uh, let's start with politics. Mr. Centeno uh, said that it's not going to be a candidate for the next uh, term. Uh, tell us a, a few words about your cooperation with Mr. Centeno, and uh, also if you think that uh, his successor has to be from a country from the South. Uh, yes, I think this would be... Uh, a, a, the right decision to take. Uh, it's obviously a decision that member states are asked to, to take, but um, this, this could be a balanced decision. Um, Centeno, I think, uh, was an excellent uh, uh, president of the Eurogroup. Uh, also, in, in very difficult uh, and challenging moments, as the one that we had uh, a couple of months ago, uh, when the Eurogroup was uh, uh, asked to, to take the important decision for um, facing the, the, the COVID the crisis, and uh, we had a meeting lasting uh, something like 15 hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Centeno patience was absolutely crucial to, to reach uh, this package that, as you know, was a 500 billion uh, euros of loans package. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, uh, uh, Europe is facing uh, and will face in the next years um, a deep crisis, economic crisis. So I will give you the chance for an opening statement about this, and then we'll take uh, some questions. I will have my questions, and then we'll take some questions from the floor. So at this point, I will ask our audience, our viewers, to submit uh, their questions at the Delphi Economic Forum uh, webpage so I can ask the Commissioner. Mr. Commissioner, the floor is yours, so I would like your opening statement about uh, Europe's economy. Uh, yes. Um, thank you. Uh, well, we all, we all know that we are, we are in, a, in a deep recession. Um, as we frequently say, that we uh, weeks the, the, the deepest recession that we experienced since the beginning of the European institution and before and maybe also before this. Um, this recession uh, is um, today also um, described with new uh, figures coming from OECD uh, outlook. Um, as you know, the OECD outlook uh, presented this morning uh, is um, uh, forecasting a uh, negative growth for the euro area of uh, around 9%. Uh, which is uh, a little bit uh, less, uh, 
more sorry pessimistic than our own forecast uh, that was uh, 7.5 uh, of negative growth but the difference is very simple uh, because the uh, cutoff date of our forecast was one, one month before the one of OECD and the situation is um, for sure um, much better and uh, going better and better from the health point of view uh, but at the same time the uh, consequences of lockdowns are very uh, strong and so the uh, we broadly agree with this uh, slight slightly more pessimistic uh, outlook coming from OECD. What is important, I think, to stress is that uh, during this crisis, um, the European reaction was uh, different from the European reaction in previous crises uh, because it was a uh, quick, uh, strong and common reaction. I don't want to be too optimistic, but I think that we should be aware of uh, results that were uh, brief, uh, with several measures at the beginning, uh, measure concerning our rules, so concerning the Stability and Growth Pact, concerning the state aid, and these measures enabled member states to spend and to intervene in their economies quickly and strongly. Then we had the uh, intervention of the, the European Central Bank uh, in the middle of March uh, with the second step uh, a few days ago. And this uh, also was uh, fundamental to uh, stabilize uh, financial markets. And third, we had after the enabling measures, uh, important fiscal common measures coming from European institutions. Uh, first, with these packages we, we were referring to of uh, 500 billion of loans coming from uh, the decision of the uh, Eurogroup. And among the 500 billion uh, loans, there was a very important measure which was the commission proposal of sure a mechanism already based on uh, the commission issuing common debt in financial markets and then uh, we had at the end of may the uh, proposal of this uh, we call it now net generation EU, the, the so-called recovery plan, recovery fund, um, and the dimension, as you know, is uh, important, 750 billion uh, distributed uh, two-thirds two in grants and one-third in loans, and the effect in itself is very important because uh, the Commission will issue, uh, we go to the markets and borrow in financial markets 750 billion. Mm -hmm. um, this is absolutely unprecedented. And uh, I think it is fully justified uh, from the, by the intention to avoid that uh, a common crisis uh, which is a symmetric one uh, involving in different ways, but all member states uh, could have uh, very different consequences in different member states before, because of uh, different fiscal power, different fiscal space. And uh, this is very dangerous for our single market and for the convergence that is needed, especially in the Euro area. So, in front um, of this danger, um, I think that 
also thanks to the Franco-German Common uh, Initiative, the Commission was uh, capable to, to put on the table a very ambitious plan. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think that if some of us uh, six months ago uh, would have said that the European Commission um, would have proposed something like this to go and borrow 650 billion uh, in financial markets and distribute this in uh, grants and long maturity loans among member states, uh, this would have appeared a crazy uh, idea. Um, and now it is made possible by a terrible, dramatic experience that we live, but it is showing also the vitality of our institutions because if you are able to react okay. uh, in this strong and common way, I think we show also this uh, vitality of the European program. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to the questions. Uh, what is OECDC projected uh, negative growth for Greece, 9%? What is your views for Greece? Uh, the, the, the European forecast uh, was uh, also 9% um, uh, or uh, sorry, 10% for, for Greece. Um, there are some slight difference uh, from the OECD outlook and our forecast. Uh, I think at the moment uh, the, the um, Eurostat estimates for the first quarter uh, that were published yesterday uh, were in line with our spring forecast. Uh, but when we presented our spring forecast, we were very clear in saying that um, the evolution and especially the forecast of a strong rebound next year, because we are uh, describing and forecasting a rebound of 6% in the Euro uh, area is uh, strictly connected to the evolution of the pandemic. Uh, so if you have a second uh, wave, and fortunately for the moment, there are any sign in any European uh, country of second wave. So we we take this as a possible negative scenario, but we don't have any evidence of second waves. But in this case, the situation could be uh, even more difficult next year than of this rebound of 6%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Greece and as Italy has a, a high debt. Are you concerned about the high debt of Greece's uh, economy? Well, we were uh, clearly uh, giving to all member states uh, a message of adopting a uh, positive uh, uh, fiscal stance. Uh, because, and this was also the reason for triggering this so-called general escape clause in our fiscal rules. Um, so to be more uh, blunt, the European Commission was inviting all member states to spend. Um, even member states uh, with high level of debt uh, were invited to face this crisis um, with the necessary uh, discretionary expenditure, guarantees, etc. Um, at the same time, uh, we uh, stated the fact that 
uh, that in all 27 member states are sustainable. Um, and I think that access to the markets in these weeks is clearly confirming the fact that uh, sustainability of debt is not a problem. Uh, but for sure, in the medium and longer term, uh, the problem of high debt should uh, again be uh, uh, faced and managed by uh, countries with high debt. So it's a, a, a message uh, for now to use uh, also countries with uh, limited fiscal space to use uh, discretionary expenditure to face the crisis. Um, th there are no risks of debt sustainability. The ECB uh, programs uh, are also extended to uh, Greek uh, bonds. Uh, and I think we, we don't have uh, risk from this point of view, but on the mid and long term, we have to take the path of debt okay. again. It depends on the countries, and uh, your message is clear. And yes, it has to be under control. And now let's go to the, we don't have enough time, let's go to the recovery package. Uh, when do you think the package will be agreed? And give us a sense of the negotiations. Uh, there, is a, uh, there are reactions from Netherlands and the Austrian government. Well, you know, I, I am uh, rather uh, optimistic on the fact that uh, we, uh, we will reach an agreement. Um, I think it is possible that the agreement uh, is not possible in the next uh, European Council, which is uh, gathering uh, in in one week, a little bit more than one week, uh, but then we will have uh, another European Council in the in one month from now uh, under the, the German presidency, uh, in a physical European Council here in Brussels. And I think that in this occasion uh, it is uh, quite possible uh, and I am confident we will reach an agreement. Um, I understand the discussions. We have discussions on the sides. We have discussion on relations between grants and loans. We have discussions on the timing uh, of this initiative. Um, and we have discussion on the key allocation um, because large part of this 750 billion. It's going to be, Mr. Commissioner, the finally, it's going to be the firepower is going to be 750 billion or is going to be less, you think, at the end? Well, I think that this is a, a, a reasonable fact. So I, I strongly invite member states we are, uh, asking for a third fund uh, and member states that are now asking to reduce this fund to keep the compromise that the Commission put on the table because I think it is reasonable. It has a macroeconomic um, significance uh, and it is, I think, uh, able to, to face uh, the crisis that we have uh, in front of us. Mm -hmm. Mr. Commissioner, talk to us a little bit about the terms. Uh, for Greece and the other countries. Uh, Mr. Dobrovsky uh, has hinted recently that it's going to be a tough supervision for some of the countries uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the returns. What is your views? Well, we, we don't have uh, different rules and different attitudes for different countries. This is um, uh, something that we all have to uh, understand well, and it, it is not easy because we are all uh, thinking to the previous 10 years. So, uh, 
uh, and the, the visions and the divisions of the previous 10 years. But here we are in a completely different story. The story is that uh, the, the plans and the funds are for all 27 member states and the, the methods are the same for all 27 member states. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and this means first ownership, because the proposal will come from member states, proposal of investments, of reforms, and of priorities in of the plans, and the Commission uh, will ensure the coherence of these plans with our common priorities. Uh, I think that this has nothing to do with previous experience, so Nothing that's, to do that's with the question, uh, Mr. Commissioner, because some people are, let's say, concerned about this, about the terms. Yes, I, am, I understand that, uh, but it is very clear that this is not a, an adjustment program with a different name. Uh, this has nothing to do with the memorandum, Troike, or something like this. Uh, this is a common crisis, uh, there is no uh, national responsibility for this crisis, and there is a common amount of resources uh, that member states can use uh, according to their program and their priorities, with the Commission uh, ensuring that these programs are coherent with our strategic and common and share goals. Um, so, uh, if I may um, give an example yes. that is a good one for all member states, I would suggest to, uh, to work for this national plan as quickly as possible, um, to propose them already in autumn, um, in together with the draft budget plan and to take in account uh, mostly two things. One is our country-specific recommendation for the Commission and second uh, are the two strategic uh, goals of the Commission, so the green and the digital uh, transition. The fact that you are proposing this national recovery plan together with the budget allows also to member states to, uh, to have uh, two different tools uh, and to concentrate the national recovery plan funded with European money in more uh, strategic and future-oriented initiatives and to use the, nat the national draft budget plans for more okay. uh, Mr. necessities of expenditure. Let me ask, because the time is over, let me ask something very quick, and uh, I, want, I would like you to, uh, to have a short uh, answer on this. Uh, so, uh, by July, you think uh, the recovery package will be agreed? And uh, uh, we had the impression that uh, the proposals uh, from the governments, different governments like Greece, Italy, would be submitted uh, by fall. It will start earlier by, uh, by the summer. Uh, I think that the, the, the draft budgetary plans are supposed to be proposed in autumn. Um, and then we had to consider uh, the fact that uh, yes, we have uh, a couple of tools uh, immediately or very quickly available. available. Um, one is a solvency instrument for companies. Another one is an emergency instrument that we call REACT-EU. But the big part of this uh, recovery plan and recovery fund will be formally connected to the uh, multi-annual budget uh, of the Union, and so it will uh, be operational next year. Uh, but this doesn't mean, from my point of view, and this is what we encourage 
member states to do that um, member states should wait for next year. Uh, yes, the money and the plan will be in place with the new budget, so uh, 1st of January next year and on. But uh, the plans uh, in dialogue with the Commission should be discussed in order okay. Mr. to have the possibility to fund them already in next spring. We have to anticipate the discussion to Mr. next autumn. Thank you so much for this uh, discussion, for this conversation. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mr. Commissioner. Well, uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.